Hi there, I'm Dan and I'm one half of Lensfair. We're an analog camera store based in Nottingham and we specialise in the refurbishment and sale of vintage and retro cameras. We like to think we're a little bit more than a regular camera store. We have a strong emphasis on social engagement. We uh, want to make photography much more open to people from underrepresented backgrounds and we have a focus on sustainability practices as well. We've been asked by uh, Real Creative Futures to do a short video on what it's been like to set up a small creative business and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the challenges and some of the successes that we've had and also some advice that we can give to other people thinking of embarking on a small creative business. So the first thing to do is to do your research. We spent a lot of time considering the type of camera store that we wanted to be and obviously part of that process is looking at other camera stores and seeing what they're offering too. And we definitely noticed that a lot of other camera stores seemed far more interested in purely the sale of cameras and photographic equipment. But as photographers and creatives ourselves, we're really interested in narrative. And so we wanted to see the journey that the camera was making, and not only in the photos that it was producing, but also the person behind that camera too, and their intentions for it. And so in that way, we could really start to build a community around that creative story. So the next thing that you want to do is consider your business structure. If you head over to HMRC, you'll see that there's multiple ways that you can set up your company. And that's anything from sole trader to a more laid back partnership or a private limited company. They have pros and cons of all of the options and you just need to do your research and check which one is suited to your personal plans and goals. Ultimately, as Lensfair, we set up as a private limited company because that was best suited to our future goals. Next up, think of a unique name. We'd actually come up with the name of Lensfair way before we told anyone about it. And we'd actually secured all of our social medias and everything like that before we'd registered it as a company or anything. Um, but if you're doing it in order, definitely take some time to sit down and think of a unique name that really tells the story of your personal brand. And then once you've done that, you'll want to check and search that it's actually available. <laughs> so go on to HMRC and check that it's available there. And then also go on to um, any domain site and check that it's available too. You'll really want to make sure that you keep your name consistent across social media platforms so that you're easily found. As Lensfair, we are at Lensfair everywhere. So on Instagram, on Facebook, um, on YouTube, which we'll start using soon. And we're actually also on Pinterest, even though we don't use that yet, but it's a good idea to get them secured anyway. Okay, so it's all well and good that you have a great idea, but how are you gonna fund that idea? For us, we were actually quite lucky because we had some seed money that we could put into the business, but you could do it in other ways. So you could get a small business grant or loan, you could get the support of an angel investor, or you could even do a crowdfunding campaign. Now you can really think about your branding, which I think is the most fun part of setting up your company, particularly if you're a creative person as well. This is in part your logo, your fonts, your colors, and just generally the look and feel of your company that really tell a story of who you are. As Lensfair, we really wanted to move away from the traditional look of a camera store or a photographic institution that tended to be a little bit more plain and formal and go for something that was bold, fun, vibrant, a little bit 90s and a lot more relaxed. So your brand is definitely much more than just your logo. It's your values, your tone of voice and how you come across to your audience. There are tons of resources out there that can help you get to grips with this. And when you're ready, you can put a brief together and send it to an artist on a platform like Fiverr. We actually ended up coming up with the logo for Lens for Ourselves, but as creators, you probably have a wide network of friends that you can call on to help you out. So maybe consider commissioning a friend and you can collab together and come up with something fun. And now you're ready to launch. So initially we were going to set up a website and use social media to drive traffic towards that. But then I remembered about a platform called Depop. And for anyone that doesn't know, Depop is an online commerce platform who in their own words say that Depop is the fashion marketplace app where the next generation come to discover unique items with a global community buying, selling and connecting to make fashion more inclusive, diverse and less wasteful. So it sounded like the perfect place for us to be. Okay, so in all honesty, I never actually heard of Depop four months ago. I think I must have been living under a rock because apparently it's been around for about 10 years. And 
in the past four months, I've actually really enjoyed using it as a platform. There are obviously some cons to using it, but because I'm nice, I'm gonna go through the pros first. Firstly, it's a very visual platform, so it's perfect for a camera store like ours. Secondly, the infrastructure for commerce is built into it, so it's really easy to list your items, and it's also super easy for people to go onto your page and buy items. Onto some cons. So one of the cons is that you have a limited audience in the sense that your visibility is limited to the people that signed up on Depop. Obviously with a website you would be open to a much more global audience, but to be honest, Depop does have around 15 million users, so I'm not sure that this is a massive con, but it's definitely something to consider. The main con is that there are fees. So Depop charge a 10% commission for every sale that you make, and then on top of that, PayPal charge 3%. So that's 13% of every sale that you don't see. However, despite the cons, we've actually found really quick success with Depop. Depop have a top seller program where you have to hit certain sales criteria and meet certain targets for four consecutive months. And then you're rewarded with the little blue tick that you see on most social media platforms. And in the four short months that we've been on the platform, we've actually met all of those targets and we're now top sellers. So it's actually been incredibly rewarding for us. And so now we have a much better idea of the sorts of questions that people will ask us. So we have stock responses. There's a lot of people that need help getting started. And, you know, we don't want to sell cameras to people and these people not know how to use them. So we always offer the opportunity for people to ask our advice. We'll share videos on how to load film into the cameras, the basics of film photography. And it's it's something that's enjoyable and people really appreciate that. And, you know, it's it, I think it's something that we've approached in a way that's different from a lot of traditional stores, which is that you take part in a transaction with the store and then your relationship with that store is over until the next time you go into that store and buy something but we always want to encourage people to share the photos that they've taken on the cameras that they bought with us and they do they they come onto our instagram page and they share their, their images we've kind of realized that that involvement with people once you've sold the item to them is as important as making the sale in the first place so this takes us to promotion Selling online is great, especially when you see the numbers go up and increase, but we knew that we needed to do something in the background to drum up some interest and awareness in our business. So one of the best ways to increase visibility is to pick a social media platform and host a giveaway. So Instagram is the area that we've decided to focus our energy on and we wanted to grow in a way that it was quality over quantity. It's much more meaningful to us to have 100 followers that are actively engaged in everything that you're doing than 7,000 ghost followers that don't engage with anything that you post. And we want to do things in an organic way. We don't want to do all these kind of shortcuts to getting followers because it's all meaningless at the end of the day. So our first giveaway was for a customized Olympus trip where we gave the winner the option of choosing the color that they wanted their trip to be. In terms of followers, it was definitely a huge success because we went from having approximately 100 followers in the first month of being on Instagram to just over 1500 followers in two weeks. Oh my God, wow. We honestly did not anticipate that the giveaway was gonna be such a big success. But in hindsight, I think we considered that the reason why it was so successful is because by giving people the option of choosing what color they wanted their trip to be, the giveaway became more of a collaboration that people could participate in, which therefore made it feel a lot more unique and personalized. So yeah, that was definitely a bit of an accidental victory, but it's something that we made a mental note of for the future going forward when we do something like that again. Um, however, one thing that wasn't accidental was that we had plans to use the time that we were getting an influx of followers to slowly start sneaking in some of our other plans in the background and incentivize people to stick around. So one of the ways that we did this was to create a photo submission tag where we would promote photographers' work and in turn we would give them the opportunity to win free film. Um, another thing that we did was to start doing a series of creative interviews with different photographers with different experience levels and with different photographic practices um, that we would then also start putting on our platform to showcase diverse talent as well. And so all of this would ultimately set the tone for the type of platform that we were trying to create and also the type of engagement that they could expect from us going forward. But what we found was once the giveaway had been announced, 
we had a flurry of people that were unfollowing us. And we looked at the sorts of accounts that were unfollowing us and it tended to be people that didn't really have much engagement in photography. So we decided to do another giveaway a little bit later and what we decided to do was to do it in a way that attracted the right sort of audience that would engage and that would would have something of interest to share with us we're an analog camera store we want to see people's photography you know that's something that we love to see we want people that are going to stick around afterwards and they're going to want to take part in this community that we're trying to to create where they feel like they can share their work with us and that they get encouragement with the other people that are sharing their work. So for the second giveaway, we decided to have a criteria where as a condition of entry, they had to submit an image. They felt best represented their type of photography. So what we found was in doing that, we had a lot less people enter the competition, but the quality of the entrance was much higher. We had people that were much more engaged, amazing photographers, and uh, ultimately, although there were less numbers of people entering, they were much better for us. So you have set up your business, you've started to grow your audience through customer base, but what is going on behind the scenes? Possibly our number one challenge in the day-to-day -day running of our company is time management. So therefore, our number one piece of advice to you would be to get organized. <laughs> Um, I know it might sound cliche, but honestly, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. So we try to have set days of the week where we do certain things. For example, on a Monday, we have an admin day, which is definitely our least favorite day of the week, but it is very necessary. Um, we will go through our finances, we will check our stock and inventory, and we will basically just comb through any tasks that will set us up for the rest of the week. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have camera repair and restoration. And we also photograph and edit stock that is going to be listed for sale. We also have to factor flexibility into our day so that we can make time to respond to customer queries and obviously post and package the items that we've sold. Um, being only two of us, this obviously doesn't leave a lot of time for developing the other aspects of our business as we'd originally planned. So we're currently looking at ways that we can possibly outsource our admin and essentially streamline our processes. So another bit of advice that we would definitely give is to get yourself signed up to a program like the ones that Real Creative Futures do. Over the past six months, we have definitely taken advantage of their courses, their workshops, one-to-one -one sessions, uh, seminars. I know for myself that I've gained lots of knowledge in how to take myself from a creative headspace into a more business-minded headspace. And even when lockdown came into effect, we've still been able to stay in touch with them through video chats with our business mentor and constant kind of emails back and forth where we can bounce our ideas and get advice on, on things that we want to do and the best way to go about doing them. So yeah, definitely get onto some sort of program like that. So in following all of these steps, We've had some great successes over the past few months and we just want to take this last little section to acknowledge some of them successes. And that's despite us obviously going through a global pandemic that we initially thought had completely torpedoed our business before it even launched. Ultimately, as f***ed up as the whole situation has been for everyone, from a business point of view, it was probably the best thing that happened to us. Firstly, it allowed us to really focus on launching the business and focusing on our social media. And as a result, we now have over 5,000 people following us across our social media platforms. We've absolutely been smashing sales for the past few months. I'm no longer breaking cameras when I attempt to repair them. And really, most importantly, We've started to lay the foundations of a socially engaged business that we can be proud of.